Hey, what's up? Behel here. And in this tutorial, we're going to create these amazing flower animation just using Mo SP line as a basic structure to create all these amazing shapes and movements. And later, we're going to set up the render using some basic materials from Redshift. And yeah, without any further ado, let's jump right in. Really quickly, I just want to share with you that I've just released my new course, The Surreal Machine. It's a complete 3D motion graphics course where you can learn how to create this entire video from beginning to end, improving your creativity and techniques. Check out the link in the description for more information. And let's go back to the tutorial. And let's begin. So I'm going to bring to start everything a Mo Esp line. Press Shift C and Mo Esp line. So okay here we have the asp line and i'm going to start by creating a cloner so i wanted to i want to replicate all of these asp lines here and i'm going to select my radio and here i have to put here x and z so we can have these circle and I'm gonna create more lines here and that's it. That's all you, we gotta do to begin our flower structure. And, and here in our Mo Esp line, we can have access to these tabs and here at these tab, simple, we have these curves, bend and twist which allows us to create these very interesting shapes. Okay. All right. So this is the basic structure. I don't know why it's supposed to uh, not be showing up these MOA spline here. And once I hide it from the viewport, it's going to hide everything. So I don't know how to hide this actually. I'm going to just move it down and that's okay that's what we need to do because the most important thing here is uh, our flower structure so what i'm going to do now is to give some room here in my timeline and i'm going to put zero in all the parameters here again and yeah so i'm going to create a quick animation like these flower growing and assuming the final shape but before that I'm gonna put zero in my radios in my cloner so we don't have this hole in the middle and now I can start to animate uh, everything I'm gonna start by creating keyframes for the length and here I'm gonna create another one maybe 40 and here I'm gonna put zero okay so we have this very simple animation a little bit faster maybe okay so let me save the file and now I'm going to animate these other parameters here maybe from here I'm not gonna hit uh, keyframes here um, in the frame zero I want to put them here a little bit um, after uh, the growing starts to animate and I'm going to check all these keyframes here actually let me bring these keyframes here so we can see the the lines I'm going to enable my auto keyframe and I'm going to create the first shape, which is like this, you know, pointing to the bottom, maybe a little bit of this curve and maybe some, I'm not going to play with the twist right now, but then we can just 
go to the next moment, which is the flower. And here we can try to find a good shape for it. Hmm. Maybe something like this. And well, I think this is looking interesting. Okay, I think this is looking interesting. I'm going to grab all these keyframes and put them close to the length and let's see how it goes. Okay. Well, maybe here we can just make some tweaks. I don't know. Let's check. Or maybe Hmm. I don't want it to grow like this. I want it to grow a little bit straight and bend up and and then we have the twist in the end. So I'm going to just delete these ones and we still have a uh, growing straight a little bit. I'm pointing to the bottom, but then I'm going to here I'm gonna just work with the band like this okay so I'm gonna let my band the way it is and from here I want it to go up just like this let's check animation Yeah, but a little bit to the beginning. Yeah, that's it. All right. Now I think it's going uh, great. And maybe here I can select a keyframe for my curve. And from here, I want it to completely change the direction. Okay. And then we had a twist. The twist is going to happen in the end. And maybe here. So I'll have to tweak uh, these other parameters together to make them work with the twist and maybe like this something like this all right i think it's working interesting like hmm so let me do something here i'm going to create a random to create something interesting, maybe the position and maybe here in the scale, I'm going to use uniform scale and maybe 0.2, oh that was too much, 0.1, well something like that, right? So we can have something more organic. Yeah, but this thing is going really fast in the end. Uh, here is the twist. I'm going to move it here. And these one I'm going to move a little bit further. So we can have uh, this final 
up not so strong right and then from here I'm gonna just maybe um, play a little bit with the other animations maybe the twist a little bit more I'll have to enable my auto key just a little bit more here from here I wanted to move up again to move down just to create some kind of delay effector and here on the curve too let's see Hmm, let's see if it's working in a good way. Yeah. It's not so organic right now, but we can tweak more. The thing is to find an interesting... I think it's subtle now. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like this. And I want to, we have this green uh, shape here representing the lines. I want to get rid of it. So now we have just the, the lines, the ASP lines. Okay, I think now it's it's working fine so let me just save the file and what we can do next one more thing to make it look even more organic I'm gonna bring a step effector step and here I'm gonna get rid of the scale and I want to offset the animations of each of these lines maybe I'm gonna put five All right. Now it's looking even more interesting, right? Okay. I'm going to group these all G and I'm going to call these um, flower base one. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to copy um, these flower base one and I'm going to call these flower um, detail one. So I want to create something to the center of this flower. And to do that, I have to I'm going to move these things up a little bit and I'm going to work on the band because I want it to close a little bit more here like creating a more in interesting shape here maybe let's see what I can get I think I'm gonna have to get rid of the twist for now I'm going to select all the keyframes and delete them. And here I'm going to put a zero so we don't have twist anymore. All right. And let me try something here. If I move the twist, it's going to be more like this, but maybe I can increase my band
so I need to see my keyframes here so my band here maybe let me just increase even more let me hide this one well it's not the band I guess you know what I'm gonna delete all these keyframes I'm gonna keep the length like the lines growing because I want to keep the same pace and here I'm gonna just delete all of my parameters like band curve and twist we have to start from scratch this thing here I want it to be just like maybe like this hmm well maybe something like this right see these ones here all right I think it's now it's working a little bit more interesting Maybe something like this. I can reduce the, the amount of lines because for this one I'm gonna be using sweep. All right, so now the thing is to test um, these animations and to bring um, the, for this one for the base, we're gonna use a volume measure and for this one, we are gonna use sweep. Let me just bring this one back and let's check the animation. Okay, but then we have to tweak this one here, which is the detail. I'm gonna check here. Uh, let me see my keyframes here twist bend okay and here I'm going to put them like zero Okay, but I want it to be more like not so opened uh, like the bottom part. I want it to grow up like more upwards. And maybe here I can just use my bend a little bit more. All right, I think it's working interesting. And now we have to just to play a little bit with the, the bouncing effect, like the delay effect. I'm just using the curve I'm not playing with band and twist for these delay effect let's see how it works just using one parameter
maybe just one more here. All right. I think now we are good to go to the next step, which is let's create some geometry to these animations, right? I'm going to stop this for now. And I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to create the volume builder. Volume builder. I'm going to reduce my voxel size maybe to three or maybe even more, maybe two. Okay. And let's bring the volume measure. Okay. And I think I'm going to use the smooth. Okay, now we see some good shape here. Right? Beautiful. And let me see the density of this mesh. It's too dense. I can, yeah, we can keep it like this. Maybe I can reshape everything, make it a little bit thinner. I'm going to put here maybe zero. Let me try minus minus five. Wow. I think now it's a little bit more interesting. Maybe if I reduce more, I'll, I'll lose some information while we have these growing effect. Let's check from the beginning. Yeah, we don't lose too much. Let me check this voxel size to one. Oh, it's not gonna work. It's gonna make the mesh too dense. And I think, I think we're good to go here with this shape. I think you don't need. We don't need to make it more detailed at this point. You can try by yourself, but I'm going to keep the shape just like this. And I have to, actually I have to create an Olympic so we can see in real time all these geometry uh, growing with the lines. So let me just select my volume measure and bake as Olympic. And let's see how it goes. Okay, so now we have the Olympic. Let me just turn these things off. And let's check how it goes here. Let me just remove the lines. Okay, it's looking good. Yeah, it looks great. We have these flickering going on here with the mesh because of the resolution. Maybe we can use this subdivision surface. Let me just apply to it. Now we're not going to lose this. What I can do here is to apply maybe a smoothing modifier. Let me just maybe put 20. Oh, actually not too much. Anyway, I think once we apply lights and everything, we're not going to lose. We're not going to have this flickering going on, hopefully. I think it's going to work fine in the end. And I'll get rid of this. We don't need it. This one I'm going to call base flower. And I'm going to I'm going to do something here. I'm going to just hide my details and I'm going to duplicate this base flower, move it up a little bit and I'm going to scale 
it down maybe to 0.7. can rotate it and I can offset the animation maybe to five and let's see how it goes well I think it's working really good try to find a very different rotation okay all right looks good so let's bring our details and I'm going to move it up a little bit like here and I want to create a sweep for these lines so let's create a sweep I'm gonna put here and my most line inside of my sweep and I want to bring my circle here let me just put maybe one so why we can see anything we're supposed to be able to see it but no that's not the case i have to put the circle on top of my uh, moesp line maybe or maybe it's here the width no it's not oh it's here why it's here at the bottom because I think I have to move my more spline and that's it right here okay Okay, but now we can tweak a little bit this sweep. It's not looking good. Maybe we can go here like details. Let me see if this, yeah, this one. We can use this S line to reshape it a little bit. Maybe make the tips a little bit thicker. something like this oh. well I wish I could disable these green um, shape here let me see if I can do that oh, it's not segments of course yeah well I'll have to keep it and then from here I can just tweak my sweep a little bit more like so and maybe create another point here in the middle And try to make something like this well but this thing is bothering me so much let me try to see if I can fix it
that's it display mode lines now we are good to go right that's it we have the option to not make them intersect so much like reducing the the length because we can see it's a little bit weird here at the top but maybe depending on the angle it's going to be good enough or maybe let me try to reduce just a little bit here my length maybe yeah here or maybe from here, no, just here. Hundred and fifty. Oh, it's not going to change this. Actually, we have to reduce maybe the band or something like these other modifiers here. okay and maybe a little bit of the length too so we can see it a little bit smaller and let me just disable these ones i want to offset them a little bit more Yeah, now it's looking interesting. Or maybe even more. Yeah, I think this is looking more interesting. Okay. I'm going to keep it like this. And now I have to convert it into an alembic too because it's so heavy to play on the viewport so I want to uh, because we are going to use the cloner to replicate them so they're going to be so heavy I'm going to keep these procedural versions in case we need to tweak later but to the final purposes I'm going to convert everything and to do that here I'm going to bring a connect my cloner and now I can convert this otherwise it's gonna create an alembic full of other elements and using the connect you can just create one file with all the information of these meshes here so let me just bake as a limbic all right now we have our flower details And I can just turn these things off here. I'm going to move them down. And we have all the Alembic files with our animation. Let's play and see how it goes. Okay. Well, one thing, one way to see a little bit more in real time, we can just select here and deselect all frames. And uh, Cinema 4D are going, is going to try to play in real time. Okay, much more interesting. And what we can do here, maybe to create something interesting, we we can see in the beginning of the um, animation they are too far from each other and we can maybe just animate a position like here and here all right 
and for this one too okay now it's looking more interesting okay so now we can just group these limbic files here and this is going to be my flower final flower okay that's it okay so let's jump right into the next part which is going to be um, to create like a bouquet and to do that I'm going to bring a cloner and I want to bring a sphere I want to make it bigger let me just use these I cause a hedron. Or maybe I don't need to use the I cause a hedron. Maybe this uh, hemisphere, like so. And I'm gonna use this sphere as an emitter. Maybe I can just convert it into a polygon object and. like this shape here I think it's looking great and here my cloner I can use object I'm gonna drag and drop my sphere here and I'm gonna put my flowers my final flower inside of the cloner all right but then I need to tweak some things here. First of all, I'm going to put here Moti instance, otherwise it's going to be so heavy in my viewport. So here I want to, let me try something here. I want it to point, uh, maybe I can rotate it from here. Like here minus 90 so we, we can see it aligned with the, the sphere and let me check something more here like I want to bring the random let me just use the scale uniform scale maybe one and let's create more flowers to our object uh, we can see so many uh, smaller flowers here that's not what I want I want them to be a little bit more about the same size with a little difference and I'm going to reduce here to point four in my random so that's it now we can just create more flowers but I want to use my push apart to try to avoid um, the intersection between them I'm gonna use the random to rotate a little bit not here maybe here I can put 10 10 and here 360 okay let me create more and find a good angle
Okay, here we have they are working interesting and I want to randomize the animation. I think I won't be able to use the multi instance. Let me try it. Or maybe I can. Let me use maybe 20. No, I'm not able to do that. So I have to, in the end, I have to test. Let me just test right now. But once you're working, you can let uh, to put here in instance uh, in the end of everything because it's gonna get so heavy in the viewport so we won't be able to play properly as you can see here is already thinking too much or maybe render instance hmm You know what? I can do something really uh, different. I'm gonna do something else here. I'm going to remove my final flower from, from my cloner. I'm going to bring another connect. And I'm going to put my flower inside of it. This is going to be connect flower. and I'm going to create another Alembic, but in this way, um, I'm going to create just one final object, just one final, um, a final shape with just one geometry for the object instead of all these three Alembic files. So I'm gonna remove my weld here and let me just Bake as a limbic. Okay, so now I can disable these three alimbics here. I don't want them anymore. I'm gonna group all these three procedural versions. Okay, and I'm gonna create a layer for them here. Procedural. I'm gonna drag and drop this one here. Actually, I'm going to middle click here to select the, the children too. And drag and drop again so we can see all of them now are inside of the same layer. And now I can just remove from, from the viewport, from the render, from the object manager and lock uh, so we won't mess up with any of the parameters. We can focus on the objects we are working now. So I have this only object here now, just one geometry. And the good thing now I can randomize them instead of using the step effector, which is not going to work since I would have to use my instance mode for my cloner and this geometry is so dense now what we can do is to duplicate some versions of these Olympic file and just offset them a little bit maybe this one I'm gonna use 10 this one I'm gonna use 20 like so and 30 40, 50, maybe one more, 60, okay. So now we can move all of them inside of the cloner, keep the render instance, and let's see how it works. Okay, not in real time, of course, but we can at least play a little bit more 
in our viewport. And what I'm going to do now is to create a preview so we can check in real time the whole animation. And let's press Alt B. Here I'm going to select Hardware OpenGL Preview. I want to preview all the frames. Um, maybe here I can put 1200 and that's it. It's going to create a fast preview. So now let's check the preview and see if everything is working good. Okay, looks good. Yeah, looks good. Okay, so now we're good to go. Let's jump right into the next step, which is to create some great material, some great lighting, and to set up the render. Okay, so now I'm gonna find a good angle. Yeah, maybe this one. I have to go here and configure or shift V. In view, I can just put here opacity in 100%. So we'll see if we have a different size for the window, for example. Here I can see um, where my camera is going to show everything, like this. And I'm going to just move it down a little bit. Actually, I'm going to create a camera, a redshift camera, because I want to change the lens, maybe to something around 50 or 60. I have to enable my camera, and that's it. Now I can move it a little bit far from the object and that's it okay all right so let's open the redshift preview and let's start to create some good light to it. Let me create um, a dome light. And okay. Maybe we can change the camera, I don't know. I'm not so sold with this one, but maybe I'm gonna start to put some material and see how it goes with this camera. Maybe we can change the camera. So let's create some, I'm gonna create some basic material. I'm not gonna use any preset or any shader that I have here. We can use just the simple materials from Redshift. Maybe I'm going to start with a gold material. And I'm going to select these two flowers and let apply the gold material. Okay. Maybe we can create another one, which is going to be the copper. And I want to select these two here. All right. So let's rename these materials. This one is my gold material and this one is the copper.
okay but let me try another angle maybe something different maybe something like this it's gonna look better let me create another camera camera 2 and let me just I'm gonna use a HDRI to my project here you can use the one you have you can download some for free oh this one looks great maybe I can reduce the intensity and wow this one looks great let me just try to rotate the light a little bit and Yeah, it looks great, looks great. Yeah, I like the way we have this light here. We don't have too much here, but maybe I can just create another one here. And well, I'm going to I like these white um version of the flower but maybe there is too much of them maybe I can create a third material I don't know if it's going to work let me see here we have iron or aluminium let me try this iron and apply to all of them and see how they are going to look yeah they look great Mm -hmm. but we need to rend them um, more than here like maybe I can play with the seed and see the best distribution well I kind of like this one yeah I like this one too Okay, now I'm going to reduce the, the intensity of my light here. I'm going to remove the background. And I'm going to copy my light and rotate it to the other side. Or I can see here we can have a good animation of the light here working really interesting with this while the animation is happening let's try something here I want to hide my sphere I can start by creating a keyframe for my light here at frame zero and from here I can rotate it to the other side like here Let's check the animation. Well, I can't really see the final result. I would have to render 
But you know what? I think I'm going to keep the light static. I kind of like the way it's creating some reflections here. I like here too. Here in the, in the middle we have them a little bit darker and it creates some interesting volume. I'm going to keep without the animation. I'm going to just create this keyframe here so I can keep the position and I'm going to delete these ones. All right, so they look good now. And now what I can do to refine this and to put it to render, I can just select my camera, which is this one, and let's create a bokeh effect. And just crank these up. Well, what's going on? why it's not working hmm it's supposed to work this is not the camera I'm using let me try with this camera well this one is working really really fine let me just check here like maybe to 2500 3,000 yeah yeah I don't like this camera actually this is not the camera I want to work I'm gonna use this one yeah this one's much better well so let me try I don't know why these bokeh is not working. It's supposed to work so well. Let me just. Maybe it's because of the distance of the camera. Well, it's not working. Hmm, this is crazy. Let me see if I create another one. It's gonna work. Let me try. Camera three. And Let me just enable my bokeh effect. Why it's not working? <laughs> That's crazy. Let me just check here what's going on. This is my first camera. This one is my second camera. Where is it? Well, this camera is so small. Why is that? Well, it doesn't give me the option to work with the focal length. I think it has to be here perspective.
okay so now I have to reposition this camera all right this angle here hmm I don't know what happened but I think I have to reposition my camera like here I might lose the first idea but let's see how it goes now I think I'm at the wrong side of it I don't know no it's not showing for me anymore let me just reposition this camera Yeah, I don't know what's happening. I'm going to create another one. I'm going to use just a little bit of the flower so I can rotate a little bit better in my timeline. Because the other camera wasn't working properly. And I don't know what happened. Let me try this view here. Something like that, right? I have to t tweak it again, everything. Okay, this one's looking good let me just create the final camera I don't know what happened okay now we have everything here working normally okay let me check my camera view here let's open this again and now Let's try the bokeh effect. Yeah, now we have some bokeh effect working properly. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but that's it. It happens. Okay, I'm going to move my light. So let me just delete the keyframes. I did this before. Oh, this one looks great. Looks great now. Maybe I can put some light information here at the bottom not so strong something like this here and I can reduce the uh, exposure okay 
I think we're good to go and render this out and see how it looks in the end and that's what I'm gonna do let's check here a little bit on the timeline yeah it looks great I like it all right I like this one let me just try a little bit here in my material maybe to increase this roughness to point three so we can see a little bit more of the geometry and also the gold material okay okay let's render these out and see how it's gonna look in the end you will probably see in the beginning of the tutorial the render done and you can check you can set up your own render I'm gonna set up a really quick one here um, I'm gonna use Redshift and I'm going to use here 128 here I'm gonna use 16 and I'm gonna use auto single pass for the denoiser I'm not gonna increase um, the reflection samples or maybe I can do that just for the reflections I'm gonna use sampling overrides for the reflection and maybe here um, 512 and I'm not gonna increase the samples for the lights I'm gonna let a uh, denoiser do his uh, its work well here I'm gonna use 256 instead of 512 okay so this is a simple a basic render setup for the animation maybe um, I'm gonna have a problem here with the bokeh effect because we don't have too much samples here I would suggest you to put at least 512 to have a good um, and smooth uh, blur here in this part I'm gonna keep it like this I'm gonna render this out and let's see how it's gonna look I hope you learned something really interesting and yeah see you in the next tutorials bye